Hey, that's the Spiel for 64K, and this is just a quick little update video for the C64 Mini. And welcome back. So the C64 Mini guys gave us an early Christmas present a few days ago on December 20th with a new firmware update for the C64 Mini. So what this video is about is a simple run through of all the new features. I'll explain them and tell you what I think about them. So before we get going, you're going to have to update your firmware for your C64 Mini. I've shown this in multiple C64 Mini videos I've done, that one and that one. So I'm just going to do a super quick abbreviated version in case anybody out there, especially newbies, you are not sure how to do this. This is the turbo version. Go to the C64 page, download the file, put it on a USB drive, put it in your mini, turn it on. Go to the settings page, right down there to system information. Choose apply and it will update your mini. Simple as that. It will only take a minute. So now that the update is done, if you scroll along the carousel there, all the way to the right, you'll come across a game called Galencia. This one here. It's an excellent game that was made by Protovision. Came out in 2017. I've covered it in multiple videos here. I'll put the links in the description below and also at the end of the video so you can check them out. It's an excellent game. It's like an awesome C64 version of Galaga. I can't possibly say anything bad about it, I just absolutely love it, I've spoken about it a lot on my channel, so I'm not going to go into that anymore, but they did promise this game at least a couple of updates ago, it was supposed to be part of it and it never materialized, I'm glad to see it now, it's really cool, it's like an early Christmas present for anybody that has never played this, you now get the chance, it's excellent, I bought this game a few months ago and I've absolutely loved it. Okay, so the second feature is called the virtual joystick. Now what this is, if you have a USB keyboard connected to your mini like this, then that automatically becomes player two in your games. So this makes just getting two player games like hardball yeah, going very quickly. So what this also means is that if you don't have a controller for whatever reason, you can plug in a USB keyboard into the C64 Mini and it will recognize that as a controller. It will already be mapped out for you. So you use the numpad to, for directions and you hit enter for or fire. So another thing to note here is that if I use the controller or I use the keyboard, depending on which one I use to start the game, if I use the keyboard and scroll across and start the game, or if I use the controller and move across and start the game, Whichever one you start the game with will be your default controller and then the other one will automatically be player 2. So bear that in mind so you can mix it all up. And what, what I really like is that it just makes playing games like hardball here just extremely easy. So I use the controller to start that up. So we'll start this game. So you can see here I'm moving the guy's bat there with the keyboard and over here I'm using the joystick to throw the ball. So I've basically it's already set up as a two player game which is pretty damn cool. So the third feature here is the file loader update. So what this feature is, is that it's going to make it a lot easier for anybody that's loading in games from a memory stick or whatever. It's going to make it easier to organize your stuff. So let me explain that. So this game here, Pitfall 2, this is one of the notorious Port 1 games. I've already done a video on that, you can check it out if you want a quick fix to Port 1 games. But with this new firmware update, you can actually streamline that a little bit more. So any game that you come across that you you can't start it, it's probably a port 1 game. That just means that in your original Commodore 64 you had to have the controller plugged into port 1 for to play it instead of port 2. The C64 Mini, its default setting is port 2, so those games don't automatically work with the controller. You have to do the port 1 fix like in the video I made. So with the new file loader then, you can take all those pesky port 1 games that you got, maybe you got 10, 20, 30 of them, and you don't have to change them individually anymore. You still can, but you can just change them all at once. So you put all those into one folder, then you create a CJM file. Now what that is, that is explained on the C64 Mini site on how to do that. I'll probably do a follow up video in the future on the details involved with making that and creating it. Anyway, so you create the CJM file and you put it in that folder and basically that tells all the games that are in that folder to, to 
to automatically go to port 2 which is the C64 Mini's default. So it's just going to save you all that time of changing each one individually and you can change them all at once. So this is also pretty useful depending on where in the world you live in. If you live in North America and you've got an NTSC C64 Mini then this is probably going to be a lot more useful to you than other people. There are other situations that it can arise but it's probably going to be most useful to you because if you go on the internet and you start searching for C64 games to download I would say 90% of them are going to be the PAL version, the European version. So if you play those PAL versions straight on your C64 Mini on your NTSC version, there's probably going to be little glitches here and there, music, it's going to be different speeds, the game's going to be different speeds. But this way, you can take all those games you've downloaded, put them in one folder and change them all to NTSC in one go. So you won't have to go individually and change every single one. It's going to make uh, your game playing on your new 64 Mini way easier. The update also includes better compatibility for USB drives and also extra controllers that you want to plug in. I don't have any extra controllers that I can plug in to test that out on. But a lot of people have contacted me and uh, sent, sent me messages and asked me which USB drives are best to use or which controllers and that. Hopefully this update will make a whole bunch more controllers compatible and also USB drives which seems to be a little bit of an issue. Yeah that's about it. I'm going to go play some Galencia. Like I said earlier I'm probably going to do a much more in-depth video on one of these features, probably the CJM files in the future, so look out for that. Might be able to help somebody out there. <laughs> and thanks for joining me, BassishB at 64K. If you can like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated. I'll see you next time. Cut credits.